Good morning, YouTube. It's your man, George Page, coming to you live, live on YouTube. Shout out to my brothers, H.J. Gucci, 23, Rooster Watcher, and also Abel Mahari. Now, Abel was the one who put me on board on this. You know, Abel is a, one of my biggest supporters anytime I come on live stream. We want to harass the, the coach uh, via phone call. <laughs> and I love his little uh, back and forth of uh, friend of me relationship he has with T.J. Brown. Often I tell him, you know, T.J. Brown, uh, Abel Mahari, you two, you all can care like you're a couple. Why don't you just have a damn baby together? <laughs> but Abel really put me on board on this thing a while back um, when we had a last live stream. He talked about it quite a few times about, um, is, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan back in the day, you know. So that's why I give shout out to my brothers, um, Weef and um, XA. They also, like me, they used to watch wrestling. And the last few years, I haven't really rewatched really as much other than maybe a little ring around every now and then. And, you know, I kind of really much don't even watch WWF. It's kind of like WWE, whatever you call it now. It's not really that good. Now that, you know, a lot of certain whistles are gone, not anymore. But anyway, uh, Abel mentioned how um, the situation was a few years ago. If you remember the wrestler name, Jesse Body Ventura. Now, Jesse Body Ventura is a legend. You know, he was a commentary for, he did a lot of commentary for um, WWE, was WWE back in the day. Uh, WWF, I mean. And um, he's a, he was a governor of Minnesota. Uh, actor and also a former United States Navy SEAL and um, thank you for your service um, Jesse for our country and um, years ago Jesse wanted to create a union for wrestlers like if you like same thing as we talked about before at MMA um, in UFC that Leslie, Leslie uh, Peacemaker Smith wanted to do the same thing create a union for uh, MMA fighters as you know they're considered independent contractors even though some of these guys have contracts but in, in um, professional wrestling, they're considered innovative contractors, meaning that their pay is based on when they make the shows or be able to perform. Um, you travel here and there. Uh, I posted a while back, there was a wrestler named name of Thunder Rosa. She had issues with a car, and it's hard for her to get her back and forth. And if she can't make the show, she can't get paid. There's no, you know, and that's hard, especially with what's going on now. A lot of these um, um, independent wrestlers and uh, MMA fighters are not really doing anything because the whole situation is going on now, so I'm not going to mention it. You know, what I'm saying, you know, just to keep it as it is, but um, Jesse wants to start a union for professional wrestlers. And as I said before, professional wrestlers are independent contractors. And an independent contractor is that you have to pay for everything out of your pocket, counting your foods, your meals, your health insurance, your, your, your life insurance. You, you know, you don't have no benefits or anything. You 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 know it's you know you're um it's basically on your pay, on your popularity you know you and also a lot of these wrestlers have to sell merchandise on the side so they make some money in between um their um, doing shows. But anyway, there was a few years after that um um Jesse had had a lawsuit against Titan Sports who runs WWE um E, and um one of the uh, litigants in that case was Vince McMahon. Him and his father Jack ran the the whole show, and um. He asked them about who told you during the litigation, doing a, uh, who told you about the whole union thing. He, he said, um, Terry. And Terry, best known as this Terry Bollet, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan. Now, this is something that, when I first this, I say, wow. You know, you can find, you find this out. This, this is public information, especially when you have trials. You know, that, that Hulk Hogan was a snitch. But then you got to think about it. the last few years, Hulk Hogan's been around a lot of controversy. As you know, there's a situation where uh, a few years ago he had a lawsuit with this guy named Bubba the Love Sponge. He supposed to be his good friend. And he and um, Bubba recorded um, Hogan having sex with his wife. And after the sex, um, Hogan mentioned that his daughter Brooke, who at the time was trying to be a, a pop singer, you know, you know and, and didn't like the idea of her being around black guys and wanted to date a black guy. This is kind of funny. You got to think about it. I mean, in the in the pop music, in just the music in general, there's a lot of black people, producers, um, you know, songwriters, other singers. I mean, it's 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 a big. It's even though there's a good number of black people in the music industry, and you have to often you know you know, work with these people every now and then, and sometimes relationship forms. If not friendships, sometimes you know other, you know more, you know close relationships, and it's just I mean, it's just to me. And I'm thinking to myself. Why do we say something like that? You know, and he was friends with, both friends with guys like Junkyard Dog, JYD, Hulk Hogan, um, several other um, black wrestlers and other, and you know, and especially he's in popular, like he's, he's acting, you know, as an actor himself, he deal with, he worked with, you know, black people. But that's the thing with people who are 
prejudice. There's a difference between two, prejudice and racist. Racists will tell you, hey, I don't like you because you're black, you know. But people of prejudice don't really say it out, but they say, say it behind closed doors. But, you know, there was also more controversy, as you know, where his son, Nick, some time ago, you know, he was in a, uh, some kind of car accident with a friend where he almost, you know, killed a friend. The guy was in a coma. I think, I'm not sure if he's still in a coma or not, but it's been some time ago when Nick had to do some a couple of times and uh, some time in, in um, jail. And, and also his wife, Linda, divorced him, and then she was dating one of um, her, her son's um, close friends, you know. But um, it's just sad to hear something like about somebody like this. But you got to think about it, you know, there, there's some other things so like you know during the um, good part of the um, late 80s early 90s the whole steroids thing you know and um, Hulk Hogan was one of those named in in the uh, steroids um, um, age of, uh, of wrestling you know uh, you gotta think about 24 inch pythons you don't get those by you know eating your, your fruits and vegetables and taking your vitamins and saying your prayers okay I mean you know you, you gotta have a little extra help and um, there's also a story where Hulk Hogan actually sued WCW. Now you know, a few years ago he left WWE for a while, uh, and you know, and he went to uh, WCW. And then that time he became Holly Hulk Hogan, you know, and he started New World Order along with um, Scott um, uh, Scott Hall and um, Kevin Nash, you know, Diesel and um, Razor Ramon, you know. And you remember those two came from WCW before they went to WWF, you know. But um. It just tells you about somebody, and this is somebody who's been an idol to millions of people, to children, to grown men. I mean, you know, and it's just sad that you got to find out this, your, your hero is just this snitch. He's a scumbag. But, you know, sometimes people hide their true identities and they do things for whatever good, for the good of, for the love of money or for a good of self preservation. Um, I'm not going to say no big word, but for, for their own self interest. But to for him to snitch on somebody like you know Jesse Body Ventura and you know as you know Jesse was a heel back in the day, but this, Jesse's a real activist. He believes in you know the real. He's really a true American hero other than Hulk Hogan, as he said before. He's a Navy SEAL, and um, and it's just it's just it's just a damn shame. You know, you hear this about somebody you admire. You grew. I used me and my brothers used to grow up watching Hulk Hogan. We used to go out watching wrestling. We, we we used to go and wrestle, you know, like when we got outside playing, we used to wrestle. We used to imagine we were, you know, we said, I want to be Hulk Hogan or, or one more said Ric Flair or something like that. But, you know, it's just sad to hear this man who's supposed to be this family man, this all-American, you know, instead of this, somebody was trying to do something to help, to benefit his, you know, occupation. You know, to make things better for them. But he does this by stabbing, you know, a supposed friend in the back. You know, this is a guy you travel together. Y'all, y'all done shows. Y'all, y'all, you know, work the, the same venues. And he's trying to do something to, to to better your situation. But you say to yourself, you know what? Nah, nah, I'm going to run up to the big boss and tell him, you know, it's just, you know. And then you kind of forget the. I mean, it just don't, to me, it just don't make sense. Why would you be just, why would you do that? I mean, why are you worry about your short-term money when your long-term money is better? This man is trying to, Jesse everybody was trying to do something to help wrestlers, his fellow, you know, performers. Because it's a struggle. You got to think about a lot of these guys after wrestling's over for them, it's difficult. I mean, some have gone through, you know, you got to think about a lot of have gone through pain. You got to think about wrestling, even though it's, it's considered not a sport, it's fake. But some of these guys take hard bumps. They they put their bodies through a lot of torture. I mean, um, you can't remember. Also, there's some have died. You know, it wasn't that long ago. It was some time ago. Remember when um, uh, Owen Hart, he fell and he died, you know. Uh, and you know, it's just, and um, I've seen some um, uh, also draws. Um, when he had that wrestling match with uh, I forget, was it uh, who was it uh, hey, I forgot his name, and he he's paralyzed, and now you know, he don't have you know, he barely he you know, barely had enough maybe to just to pay his bills, or he might have got some donations from the other guys, but you know, it's just difficult for these guys, unless you're the big money guys like John Cena or um. Roman Reigns or Goldberg, you know, you can probably live a good life because you can live off merchandise. But some of these guys, the other guys, the low level guys, guys in the independence, they don't make much. Some have to sell merchandise on the side just so they can make end meat, you know. 
and you know wrestling these guys you know i i, I still in a way even though i don't watch wrestling much like i used to i still like watching i still like the the stunts and the the pageantry like rick flair coming out his uh his gold you know crystal robes and you know and the you know and, uh, or when um john cena comes out and you say john cena i mean but you know a lot of these guys who are not these guys the top level they they have a time trying to you know take care of their home, pay their bills. They most of the time down the road, almost 360, 365 days out of the year. They're barely home. And then you know when it's over, we have to retire, or because or just injuries just plague your body so much that you just have to decide. You know I can't do it anymore. It's hard. You know, there's a lot of guys who often go to drugs and alcohol just to, to heal the pain. You know, Jake Snake, he's been a uh, known alcoholic. But, you know, a guy like Hulk Hogan, who who um, kind of just stabbed, you know, someone like Jesse by Ventura because he's trying to better their their situation and occupation. For him to do like that, that tells you what, what kind of person he is. And I've have, I've often heard from, I've watched um, some stuff on video, on YouTube, stuff like how I've watched say that, yeah, Hulk Hogan is a jerk. Yeah, he's he is a jerk. And, um, you know, I just, I just, I don't know. I, I, I just, it's that little kid of me just say like, no hope, you can't do that, no hope. But that adult me realize like, man, you're a jerk. You're an asshole for what you did, you know. And, um, you know, it's just, like, you, like I said, this, if you go to a wrestling show, really so appreciate these guys. I mean, tell them, you know, hey, buy their merchandise, you know. It, I know when things are going now, people may not have the money, but hey, uh, a sticker, a t-shirt like that, that really helps these guys because you know what, it's the way they make money on the side between um, what they get paid from these shows. Sometimes they barely make maybe uh, 200 some bucks per show from what I heard. And you know, especially in independence, it's really hard in independence. And, and these guys do these things for the love of this sport. You know, it's like with bodybuilding. Bodybuilding, most people in bodybuilding don't make as much money, but they do it because of the love of the sport. And this is the same thing with wrestlers. They do it for the love of, of, of entertainment and the love of the sport. So, Hulk Hogan, you're a jerk. Uh, just by Ventura, by Ventura, you're a great guy. You're a legend. You know, uh, I loved you in term, and I'm a predator. <laughs> uh, but, um, like I said, just, just, I, I just want to say, just, again, Hulk Hogan, you're a jerk. <laughs> and that's all I can say. It's your man, George Page. Like, subscribe. Don't like, subscribe. I'm out.